I want to thank the people and the companies that made this test possible. Picture This provided the Blackmagic camera, Sean lent his Epic, Patrick brought his Alexa, Isaac assisted throughout the shoot, and Lori gave of her time to be our talent for the day. 180 films let us use their beautiful Cook Zoom, while Lettuce provided the cage for the Blackmagic camera, and Schneider provided us with the IR tuner kit. Thank you for your contributions, as it wouldn't have been possible without them. This first setup was lit with an Airy 1K open face light to a T22, and it was shot with the Cook 20 to 100mm lens. Everything was shot in RAW to allow me to capture everything that the sensor was seeing. All of the camera settings are notated on the screen, and other than converting the footage to log DPX files using the camera manufacturer's supplied software, nothing has been touched or altered. What you see here is what I saw on set. If you want to play with the raw files yourself, I've made them available for download from my blog at ryanewalters.com. Each raw frame includes an X-Rite color chart, a gray card, and various swatches of black cloth. The differences in this test are most noticeable on the gray card and black cloth, so I'm going to blow up the portion of that frame and overlay the normal T22 exposure with the ND exposures below. I will also show you a sample raw frame that I have color corrected in Resolve to bring it back to neutral, or as close as I could possibly get it. So let's get started, shall we? As we take a look at the Alexa with the N3 in the lens, we can see a very minor shift towards red. As soon as I add the 680, the shift goes away. And taking a look at the 715 reveals just a slight minor increase. And at 750, the color shift is starting to reappear. These are all very small color shifts. The IR filtered frame was easy to bring back to neutral. The waveform shows that there wasn't a large color separation in the first place but the minor cleanup does make the blacks more true. The Black Magic, on the other hand, has a stronger color shift at N3 than the Alexa. With the addition of the 680, it's removed, while the 715 is starting to show back up, and the 750 continues to let more IR into the camera. Just like working with the Alexa, the IR filtered frame was easy to bring back to neutral. The waveform shows a very minor color separation. After the cleanup, it's all back to neutral. As you can see, the color science of the Epic is significantly different from the Alexa or the Blackmagic. With an N3 in the lens, there is a subtle color shift, but it's not too substantial. The 680 cleans it up, and the 715 looks pretty good too, while the 750 appears to be letting in a little more IR, as the blacks are shifting towards magenta. The waveform of the IR filtered frame shows a larger color separation than either the Alexa or the Blackmagic, but it's easily corrected back to neutral. Now with an N6 in the lens, the Alexa is shifting more towards red. Even though it's a minor shift, it's still perceivable. The 680 clears it up, correcting the problem, while the 715 and the 750 do not seem to be helping a whole lot. The IR filtered frame does show minor color separation, and it's easily brought back to neutral. Blackmagic makes a noticeable jump in IR pollution at an N6, as there is a clear shift towards red and magenta. Fortunately, the 680 clears it up, and the 715 doesn't do too bad either. However, the rayon strip does show some red. The 750 continues to let more IR pollution through. The Black Magic is showing more color separation here than the Alexa showed, but working with RAW has allowed me to easily bring it back into balance. Even though it's balanced, take a look at that rayon strip, as it is still exhibiting some additional redness, even though the cotton is balanced. The Epic continues to push the colors towards magenta, as the IR pollution is clearly seen here but it's potentially not objectionable, depending on your tastes. The 715 still looks good with the Epic, while the 750 is revealing more IR pollution. The IR filtered frame shows a noticeable color separation, but it's possible to balance the frame back to neutral. Increasing the ND to a 9, the Alexa reveals a noticeable shift towards red. The 680 again does a good job at removing it, however you can clearly see that some of it is still getting through as the blacks are not 100% black as they were before. This red level continues to increase with the 715, and again with the 750. The IR filtered frame reveals a noticeable color separation that is possible to neutralize. However, the rayon patch still contains some contamination, even though the cotton patch is balanced. Black Magic follows the Alexa's lead as it shows a stronger shift towards red and magenta. Adding in the 680 gets rid of a lot of the problem, but it's still there, most notably in that rayon strip. The 715 and the 750 only increase the amount of IR getting through to the sensor. The IR filtered frame shows more color separation than the Alexa did, but fortunately it is possible to bring it back to neutral. And just like the Alexa, the IR contamination still remains in that rayon strip. Now the Epic is making a clear push towards magenta, as the blacks are becoming an odd purple color, and here's where the color differences between the cameras become really clear. The 680 cleans it up nicely, but it still manages to let some pollution through, as you can see the red and the blacks. 
Red continues to fill the blacks as the 715 and the 750 are used. The IR filtered frame shows a clear color separation in all three RGB channels, which can be balanced out for the most part. The rayon strip still continues to show some IR pollution. Using an ND 1.2, the images from the Alexa are a reddish brown. The 680 does a nice job at cleaning up a lot of that pollution, but it isn't gone, as you can still see red in the blacks. Red continues to invade the blacks with the 715 and with the 750. The IR filtered frame shows more color separation than before, but it's mainly in the red channel that's causing most of the problem. It is possible to neutralize this for the most part, but as you can see, that rayon strip is still contaminated and there's some very minor contamination in that cotton strip as well. The Black Magic continues to have severe IR problems, which makes me think that there's probably no IR filtration at the sensor level in this camera. The 680 cleans the image significantly, but not completely, as the blacks remain with a red cast to them. At 715, it becomes a bigger issue, and by 750, the problem's back. The color channels in the IR filtered frame continue to separate. However, they can be brought back into alignment. The rayon strip continues to show contamination in the balanced frame. However, the cotton patch is free of any contamination. The Epic continues to jump towards magenta, and the blacks are clearly purple now. The 680 removes the purple, while some red continues to get through to the blacks. The 715 has a slight increase in red levels, and the 750 continues to move the blacks away from purple and still increase their red content. The IR filtered frame shows a further color separation in the color channels, making it more difficult for me to completely neutralize the IR pollution, but I get pretty close. The rayon strip continues to be the biggest problem, as it remains contaminated even when the other patches are balanced out. The strongest filter I had on hand for this test was a 1.5, and with the Alexa, the blacks turn a vibrant red. The 680 knocks it down, making them more manageable, but it's still clearly there. And when the 715 is used, it lets in more red to the blacks and the 750 feels like there is very little, if any, IR filtration going on. The red channel continues to separate itself in the IR filtered frame. When it's brought back into alignment, the IR pollution remains in every patch. It's barely visible in the cotton patch, and it's clearly visible in the rayon patch. The Black Magic continues to struggle with heavy NDs, as there appears to be a lot of IR pollution. The 680 does its best to remove the IR contamination but a red cast remains in the blacks. The 715 and the 750 only compound the issue. The IR filtered frame shows greater color separation than before, and it's even more than the Alexa. When it's brought back into alignment, only minor pollution remains, with the rayon patch being the worst offender. And the black magic seems to clean up better than the Alexa did, as there's less contamination in the cotton patch. The Epic is also struggling with IR, as the blacks have become purple. The 680 takes away some of this problem, but something stronger is needed. The 715 and 750 continue to let more IR pollution into the blacks. The color channels continue to further separate themselves in this IR filtered frame, but when they're brought back to neutral, only minor IR pollution remains. Rayon still shows its problems. After completing this test, here are my observations and recommendations. If at all possible, use wardrobe that is made from natural fibers like cotton and stay away from blends, especially if they contain rayon. If you're shooting on the Alexa and you're hypercritical about getting your colors right in camera, then you should start looking at IR pollution at any strength of ND. If you are not as critical, then you do not need to worry about it until you are at an N9 or stronger. Of these three filters, the 680 works the best. If color accuracy is critical for you, then you'll want to look at another IR solution when you get to ND strengths of 1.2 or more. Of the three cameras, the Black Magic definitely has the biggest IR issues. IR shows up straight out of the gate, and it becomes very noticeable with an N6 or stronger. Of the three IR filters I tested, the 680 is the best solution for this camera. And while IR still shows up when using filtration and heavier NDs, it appears that it's possible to neutralize most, if not all, of what remains in the grade. But if you do not want to spend the time in the grade neutralizing IR, then you'll want to look for another IR solution. When you're shooting with the Epic, you'll need to use IR filtration at any strength of ND if you're hypercritical about color. If you're less critical, then you do not need to start worrying about it until an N9 or stronger. At lower strengths of ND, you can use the 750, but by the time you get to an N9, you'll want to be blocking at 680. When shooting in tungsten light, the Epic is applying a lot of gain to the blue channel to balance to that color temperature of light. That means that your blacks will have a greater chance of showing noise if you're not careful about your exposure levels. And it will also make it more difficult to intercut footage with the Alexa or the Black Magic, especially due to the differences in color science. And that concludes part one of Some Like It Raw. 
Check back next week for part two when I take a look at how these cameras handle low light, and then wrap it up with part three, where I explore a high dynamic range scene, the roll off into overexposure, skin tones, as well as diffusion filtration. Until next time, get out there and shoot.